forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at JISEC in Dubai, continuing coverage. I'm speaking with George Sebastio. He is the head of global services with ITS. How are you today? Everything has been great. It's been a long day, but it's a pleasure to be here. I bet. It's been a long day for all of us. It's been a fabulous show. And I'm so glad you're here because I understand that you have been dealing with cybersecurity in the Gulf region for over 15 years. And I was curious, how have things changed over the last 15 years out here? Actually, things have changed a lot. Uh, I remember when I arrived in the Gulf uh, close to 20 years ago, uh, even just not about security, but even the normal IT was in its early stages of development. Uh, connectivity was very expensive. and uh, But it they went through a tremendous revolution. So it's kind of like going from the 80s to the... 20th century without necessarily going through the 90s, so it made an extra jump. Now, when it comes to security, of course, there is also a lot of change. Uh, the early days, we spent a lot of time actually uh, building knowledge about what is even security, why is security important? Because if we were talking about security to most organizations, they certainly did not understand the terminology that we're using and the importance. So a, a lot of education had to go in in the early days to, so they appreciate the value that security actually brought to their own organizations. Right, and now we're finally just now getting to a point where everybody's on board realizing that cybersecurity is an issue, it's a real problem. Um, was it hard, like, kind of convincing people that, you know, cybersecurity is a real thing that, that's needed? Actually, it has always been very hard. And the reason why it's hard is because people don't always see immediately security as something that adds value to the bottom line. So they pay extra for security. So people have to realize that security is really about protecting their investment first. Of course, uh, when you're trying to protect your investment and I go to you and you must do this to protect your investment, they go, oh, why do I really, this never happens to me. Uh, at, the, at the end, in the Middle East, we are safe. We can leave our cars unlocked and there's no crime. So it's actually a very safe area. Uh, but however, over time, what has happened is a few cyber incidents happen. So to some extent, we had some very large cyber incidents. And as these cyber incidents happen, it actually made our job easier because every time there is a large cyber incident, the customers call us, oh, please come help. We really need your assistance. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, yeah. it's not that we want these cyber incidents to actually happen, but the fact that they actually took place, it actually make our job much easier with the customers. Right, that's how it is in this industry. Um, what were some of the main um, cyber incidents that have happened over the years that have really brought light to the situations? Well, most of the original cyber incidents uh, were simply uh, web defacements. Uh, but as you can see, if you remember in the early days of attrition.org and eventual uh, Zone 8, uh, actually managed by a good friend of mine called Roberto Piatroni. Uh, so people are very image conscientious. So once somebody comes and defaces your website and puts either some uh, unwanted material, they're actually damaging your reputation in front of the public. So they saw this as very critical issue. Of course, no data is being stolen, etc. So this is the originally sets of incidents. But what happened over time, and certainly in the last three or four years, the motives have changed. The motives have changed into three primary areas. So the attacks have gone into cybercrime attacks. So the motive is actually profit. So people are trying to get at transactions, ATM machines, uh, online A-payment systems. There has also been a um, second type of attacks, which is what we call politically or socially motivated attacks. Somebody does not like uh, what uh, certain groups are doing, so the only way they take their message yeah. is by destroying. So again, they're not really stealing any information, but they want to be in the news. Activism. Activism. And the third type of attacks, which is again even more recent, but uh, I think is certainly on an increase, are what do we call national infrastructure attacks. And certainly the first one uh, that was a wake up call for the region was when Aramco and Qatar actually got attacked. And people saw, oh, this kind of attacks can actually stop our oil production, mm -hmm. or could. It actually did not do that, but because they came very close to the crown jewels of what uh, is 
dr providing the value in the Middle East, they, this raised the importance of uh, certainly cybersecurity. So today, uh, most government, most organizations that are in the critical infrastructure are taking the necessary steps to do security in a, a professional way and they have brought in professionals, they have got the necessary education, they brought in the tools and the processes. But one of the things that still remains a big challenge is actually security awareness. And if you actually look here at JITSEC, you see that there's a lot of technology. I would say probably 80 or 90 percent of what you see here is technology companies presenting. Mm -hmm. But today, the biggest challenge still remains people, not technology, not even process to some extent. So I still think this is an area that needs to be properly addressed. So and until that gets addressed, uh, it will be a long and hard fought battle. Because security awareness is not just about delivering a message to the users, it's about changing their behavior. And obviously you cannot change their behavior by simply doing uh, basic things. You have to understand the culture. Mm -hmm. So let me actually give you an interesting example that happened. During the uh, early days of, um, uh, in the, uh, Dubai, the malls became very populated with people and tourists. And Dubai has always been very cautious about their public uh, image locally and internationally. And what they had is that youngsters that were going and harassing young women in the malls. And so what they used to do is arrest the youngsters and then release them the next day or, and so on. But they noticed that no matter what they did, the problem never got solved. So it's a bit like the security awareness. You have to understand culture on how to fix it. Right. So you can imagine that the solution was actually very basic, but it worked extremely well. So what they did is they started publishing the pictures with the name of these uh, perpetrators <laughs> on the weekend newspapers. Right. So what ended up happening is these individuals are not longer being punished by the authorities. They're actually being punished by their own families. Right. So please, you cannot do that because you're shaming the name, name. of, of uh, our name. So, and guess what? It was extremely effective. So although this is an interesting example, we have to start applying very similar examples like this to our own security awareness. So it's not just bringing the security awareness, it's about understanding the culture and adapting that security awareness to fit the culture. Interesting, culture specific things. And I know you're a very international man. You've lived and worked in many different regions. You speak many different languages. How does cybersecurity, both in threats and solutions, how does it differ from region to region and what makes it unique? How is it unique in the Middle East and the Gulf? Actually, I would here, I would say actually something completely the opposite. I would say cybersecurity is not unique. It has become an international problem. So in, in that sense, uh, the attacks can come from anywhere and there's no borders anymore. So people have realized that although the Middle East is different and the when it comes to cybersecurity and cyber attacks, it cannot be isolated. It's connected to everywhere. So attacks can come from foreign countries like Asia, Russia, or others. And there is much bigger problem because if the attacks came from locally, you can always use the local laws and the local authorities to respond right. and put uh, these people in jail. But because the attacks are coming outside of legislation and outside of borders, how do you actually take care of these perpetrators across borders? So I think there is a lot of maturity that needs to take over the next few years of bringing some kind of, you can call it almost the United Nations of uh, the internet yeah. to say, how do we extradite people from one location to the other? How do we ad address this global problem? Mm -hmm. So I would say that cybersecurity at the various levels, where it's a financial level, activism level, or even critical infrastructure is now a global issue. And there has to be international cooperation. I'll give you a few examples of that cooperation. Uh, most of our countries here now have a CERT operating, but one of the things they started doing is CERTs cooperating together. So uh, a few years ago, there's what's called OIC CERT, which is the CERT of Islamic Cooperation Council countries cooperating together. So that means they're exchanging cyber attack information and they're cooperating in defending themselves against this uh, new generation of attacks. Definitely. Um, now, what exactly brought you here to JISEC today? Actually, the primary reason I came here to JITSEC is completely uh, different. I came here actually to network with uh, my peers. Uh, uh, if I was going to meet these people, I would have to fly to five different locations <laughs> yeah. or six. Here in one day, I get to visit everybody in the same location. So I consider it a very effective way 
of, yeah. uh, of uh, saving on my sleep time. Right, there you go. Just kind of catch up with everybody all at once. Correct. Nice. Well, it was so great to meet you and so great to speak with you. We really appreciate your input. It's my pleasure. Awesome. Until next time. Yes, until next time. Everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Secure Ninja YouTube channel so you don't miss anything that we're shooting out here in Dubai. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and we even have an Instagram account now. We're putting up tons of cool pictures from Jai Sex, so make sure you follow us on Instagram. I'm Alicia Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.